welcome flip clock fans. You're looking at a flip clock motor. A fairly representative motor. These are very common motors in flip clocks. It's called a Copal 2. And as you can see, it's gunked up. That's the most common problem with these motors. Most common thing that has to be fixed. This particular motor came from this type of clock, a Copal Model 227. Very common clock and very neat little clock. Comes in a lot of different colors. And what we're gonna look at here in this particular case, we're not really gonna work on this directly, but you see that gear there? Looks like a piece of toast. Well, that's why this, this motor wasn't working. And people don't like it when I say this, but these things were not made to be fixed. They're not like a, a typical clock that uh, people will disassemble and fix, you know, with the metal gears. These plastic gears against these brass gears tend to get chewed up after 40 or 50 years. I think the makers would be surprised to find out these things were still going. They weren't made to, to be repaired or to last forever, but man, they've come close. You can see here, even this gear is cracked. So this thing is, is pretty messed up. So I'll show you how to take it apart in case you thought you could replace the gear. I would just replace this whole motor, but I'm gonna show you how to disassemble this outdoor edge. It's a razor light. It's got these replaceable blades here. They're stainless steel and they're pretty tough. You're gonna see, because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these posts here, they're aluminum posts, kind of an aluminum alloy, and just shave that off. Now there's a couple different ways to do that. You can shave them off, you can sand them down with a Dremel, you can drill them down. I've done that before. But this is gonna work. You have to have a, a good sharp knife, and like I said, I'm not afraid of messing up my knife because I just replaced those blades. Kind of leery about the knife slipping, maybe damaging the motor, or maybe me or my table. It's kind of hard to do on, on the camera here, but you see where this post comes in the back? That would have been pressed in and then a, a something come down on top to kind of crimp it or mash it down, sort of like a rivet. They were not made to be taken apart. I've already said that before, but it's clear you can see that. So we're gonna just work this out. And you can see it's shaving it off. One hour later. Well, I got it done. But you can see both of us are kind of worse for wear there. Didn't look that bad. Well, at least, at least I'll heal anyway. But no, nah, I'm just kidding you. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It does, it doesn't look. It's not the prettiest thing though. So you, we've shaved those off, and and what has to happen is you have to pop, kind of pop those rivets out. You could try to just pull it. That's not going to work. The good thing is, when I snap that out it'll actually snap back. The thing is though, you don't want to force it because you're gonna, you could bend it, you could warp it. That's a real danger. So you gotta take something thin to get down in there, again without cutting yourself or damaging the clock. We're gonna pry it. You can't just get real aggressive again. In, in my case here, I'm just going to use this clock for demonstration, but I'm gonna act like I'm gonna try to preserve it. I have taken one of these apart before and replaced the gears. I've done it a couple times. And, and it does work if you get lucky and get the right gear, but it's difficult. So I'm using a thicker blade here, a real pocket knife. And that snapped, that's snapped that out. And you, I'd be able to push that back in later and maybe seal it with epoxy or Something like that, you know, fingernail polish or something like that. Again, taking time not to warp things here. And this one actually has three.
and that's that. Now that separates the motor, which is what I'm interested in showing you today, but we're still not there as far as trying to repair this gearbox. So you'd have to snap off the top plate there, pry it off to get to the gears. We're not going to do that here. The main point, like I said, is I want to try to show, outside of messed up gears like that, I want to try to show what is the main reason these motors don't work and and how it works, how do we how we fix it. So you you may have seen other videos where we put alcohol in there or we'll put WD-40 or just plain oil. I want to see why that works. Now there's only basically this one moving part. So when you think of motor, you usually think of something more complex. It's an electric motor. Very simple. Of course you could consider the gearing part of the motor. But for our purposes here, we're just going to look at why lubrication works and, and, and how to maybe go about doing it. So this gear here is, is just a matter of prying that off because there's no retaining ring there or clip. It's just a matter of getting there and, and pulling that off. You can see where that's fit, fit over top of that arbor. It's just press fit. You don't want to try to just pull the rotor off, the thing that I'm spinning. You don't just pull that off, you'll warp that can. So you can't do it that way. You can't just pull off this rotor. That is aluminum and it will, it will bend and you'll destroy it. Now I'm putting a drop of oil here, right here, just to show you what something just like that would do. Now in reality, you can't do that. You can't do that on a, on a normal clock unless you take it apart, which is, is insane. But you can see that it's actually moving a little better just from that. Now that's not usually how I oil the clock. I use the oil from the bigger holes on the outside here. And I always say drop it down like you're trying to drop it down towards that arbor or that axle right in the center. So that oil is supposed to drip down there, get to that axle, and then you spin it and spin it and it's going to try to work its way down there. So here in a second, we are going to take it apart so you can see how that might be working. So with time, if I kept, if I kept working that, that would actually work out. So let's go ahead and take this apart, though, so we, we can get a really good appreciation of how this is working. So again, we're going to pry, get up underneath that, and... Get up underneath that and pry that off. Now you can see it's just just a just a post. This is a very simple post that goes through a hole. And those holes there, I'm calling bushings, that's what it is. Now what happens sometimes to these clocks is the metal, the stainless steel, will wear on this brass bushing there and make it kind of oval shaped. That's why the clocks will get kind of clunky. They'll make a noise when they run because they're rubbing up against the cage, the electric motor. Now when I oil, you usually see me coming in and say I'm going to drop that oil down and you can see it's trying to get to that arbor or axle and it'll have to work its way down. Now in this case I'm just going to smear some on there. You can't do that in real life. That's just a little washer there. That's not impeding motion at all. Kind of dirty. But the oil that was in there has gotten gunked up and dried up over the years. And this just spins like a top now. So it's a matter of getting the lubrication to go on that post to get down into that hole. That's mostly how it would fix a, a motor. Again, you can see this one actually is in really good shape. If it weren't for the gears being screwed up, this would have been a good one. That there is a metal strip. It's actually a magnetized strip. So it works with the other part of the motor. 
with the cage there creates a rotating magnetic field. You see when I put this up against this compass that the strip does have polarity. So that magnetic field that's created by the other part of the motor will cause this to spin. And it's not going to have a whole lot of torque. That little thing, just this little rotor here, this uh, little thing spinning around. And that's what the gears are all about, is to take something that doesn't have a lot of torque and kind of gear it up to where it can actually move a flip clock. Again, you'd look at that and you'd think there was moving parts there. That's just a, those are just copper windings underneath that cage. The cage itself makes it a self-starting motor. It sort of gets, it sort of gets the ball rolling before the magnetic field can take over and get this spinning. So the mechanics of that are beyond, beyond us here today. We're not, we're not in, into that right now. We're just talking about the mechanics and of getting this oiled and getting it back on the road again. Again, there's no play there. Like I said, a lot of times the bushings get wore out at the six o'clock position where gravity's pulled down on that arbor and wear that out and cause it to clunk around. That's why, like I said, you turn it upside down, sometimes the clocks to quit making noise. And I don't really think you can fix that. I mean, it's possible, but the cost and the time and the potential for damage. So when I win the lottery, we're going to rebuild these motors. We're going to start manufacturing them again. But until then, we're just going to do the best we can. Thanks for taking the time.